Hey everybody, I have a video here for you today. Now, over the past couple weeks, I have been asked a few times about Gunang Padang. One person asked me if I've ever made a video on Gunang Padang, and that's how I'm going to pronounce it, by the way. I've heard it pronounced a few different ways. And another person asked me if there has been any, been any updates on the research done at this site, and uh, not really. And it seems that this site, the research, has run into some roadblocks set up by the government. And isn't that the way it usually goes when dates are coming out that fly in the face of the standard model of history? But here we are on the island of Java, and this is the ancient site of Gunang Padang. This is what it looks like on Google Earth, and this is what it looks like. Now, originally, this was thought to be a, me a megalithic site built with these basalt columns that was uh, a couple thousand years old, built on top of a hill. But when research was done on this hill, amazingly, they discovered that it was a human-built pyramid that basically reshaped an ancient hill into a pyramid. And this is what it looks like. This is Graham Hancock's website. And I will leave a few links below. But uh, the dates coming out of core research done at this has come out with dates that are incredibly 20,000 plus years old. So I think uh, some real scrutiny should be done on the research coming out of the site. But everything that I've read, the researchers are very legitimate. And uh, what they find seems to totally fly in the face of the standard model of history. So obviously some people are having some problems with that. But uh, I just wanted to give you a good look at what an artist rendition of this ancient site looks like. And this is one website. Uh, this is Human uh, Resonance that has an excellent uh, website here, article on Gunag Panak, some good pictures, some interesting uh, things that they discovered about this site. And they also have a YouTube videos that, that they allowed to be shared. And I'm going to be uh, putting that at the end of this video where you get a good look at Gunang Panang and some uh, a flyover of the site, among other things. But this is a site that I think we should keep an eye on because of the incredibly old dates. And I will leave the link for uh, Human Resonance, their website below. And once again, I'm going to play a video from them at the end. This here is Andrew Collins' website. And I'm not going to read, but uh, I will leave the link if you want to read this. But uh, I think this is excellent research, though I don't agree with everything Andrew Collins says. I respect his research highly. And this says, Southeast Asia's largest and most enigmatic megalithic complex. Is it a pyramid hill 12,000 years older than Gobekli Tepe? And Gobekli Tepe really changed uh, history. That site is proven to be 12,000 years old. And uh, that goes back farther than a lot of people can even, uh, you know, really fathom and contemplate what was going on 12,000 years ago. But if this site here is 20, 25,000 years old, then it is twice as old as Gobekli Tepe. And that is a time on earth where i'm sure the earth was much different and we cannot even relate to what was going on and even the land masses of the earth i just want to show you something real quick here now this is the way the world looks today in the indonesia sumatra java area and if those amazing dates are correct coming from the research at gunai padang then it came from a time when the world looked completely different and i want to just uh, show you what the land masses would have looked like in this area at the time of those dates from the Gunang Padang research. And this is what the land masses would have looked like at that time period, or somewhat very similar to this. And when you compare them to what it looks like today, you can tell uh, the incredible amount of land mass that was covered up by rising sea levels about 10,000 years ago. Once again, there it is. We lost a heck of a lot of land mass when sea levels rose about 400 feet. Just wanted to show you that. Now I'm going to read from Graham Hancock's book, Magicians of the Gods, and I highly recommend it to those of you who are still involved in the Lost Art of Reading books. And this comes from Chapter 2, The Mountain of Light. It says, 
Everything we've been taught about the origins of civilization may be wrong, says Danny Hillman Nadawajaja, PhD, senior geologist with the Research Center for Geotechnology at the Indonesian Institute of Sciences. Old stories about Atlantis and other great lost civilizations of prehistory, long dismissed as missed by archaeologists, look to be set to be proved true. It's December 2013. We are in Sinajar Regency, about 900 meters above sea level and 70 kilometers west of the city of Bangun on the island of Java, Indonesia. In 1914, lines scattered among the dense trees and undergrowth that then covered the summit of the pyramid, ancient man-made structures formed from blocks of columnar basalt were first shown to archaeologists. Local people held the site to be sacred and called it Gunang Padang, the name it still goes by today, often mistranslated as mountain field by those unaware that the language of this area is not Indonesian, but Sundanese, in which Gunang Padang means mountain of light or mountain of enlightenment. The structures were found to be arranged across five terraces with a combined area of about 150 meters long by 40 meters wide. The visiting archaeologists were told that the terraces had been used as a place of meditation and, ret and retreat since time immemorial, and again this remains true today. However, neither the archaeologists nor apparently the locals realized the pyramid was a pyramid. It was believed to be a natural hill somewhat modified by human activity until Nadawa Jaja and his team began a geophysical survey here in 2011 using ground-penetrating radar. It says, by then the summit had long since been cleared and the structures on the terraces recognized as works of megalithic architecture, but no radiocarbon dating had yet been done and the age attributed to the site, about 1000 BC, was based on guesswork rather than on excavations. So that is just an introduction into Graham Hancock's chapter on Gunang Panank in his book, Magicians of the God. I highly recommend it. It is entitled The Mountain of Light. And uh, the Mountain of Enlightenment, I think that fits with other ancient pyramidal complexes. Uh, something that this culture that we live in today just cannot uh, relate to. These were temples of enlightenment, something that has been kind of lost today. Now I want to play for you that clip from Human Resonance, their website or their YouTube channel. And uh, I always appreciate when channels make their videos shareable. So I appreciate that and a big thanks to them. And I'll leave a link to their channel below if you want to sub it. But here is that clip from Human Resonance. At the top of the long entrance stairway, counting 400 stairs to the Gunung Padang Pyramid, there's a small square enclosure that's lined in by paving stones on the bottom where a fascinating electromagnetic effect has been noticed. Video recorded by Yuk Tanzil Full on October 14, 2014 documented a magnetic anomaly about one meter above Terrace 1 that induced the perpetual spinning of his cell phone's digital compass indicator. Archaeological excavations conducted on the first layer have exposed rows of horizontally stacked plinths and have been actually cast on site in the clay molds. In between these stacked megaliths, there's a fine layer, like a mortar, of orange cement. This simple geopolymer cement is composed of about 45% iron, 41% silica, and 14% other clay minerals. 
The first ancient relic to emerge from the deeper layers of excavation at the Padang Pyramid reveals the specialized biophotonic hands-on healing practices for which the megalithic mountain was designed. The noticeable weight of the object betrays a very high density that significantly exceeds the density ranges of all natural basalt, andesite, and diorite stones. CT scans of the artifact revealed the distinct presence of metal particles in green, displaying a homogeneous distribution pattern within the stone matrix, confirming its artificial origin as a cast metallic geopolymer tool. The orange coloration of the metal inclusions are consistent with fine kaolinite clay granules containing iron particles, imparting magnetic properties enhancing bioelectrical transduction during biophotonic key meridian healing practices on site. Surface micrographs of the hand tool taken at 32 times magnification reveal orange colorations that suggest iron as the main constituent of the metal inclusions, while shiny gray nickel particles are also visible. Analog magnetometers also register rotating magnetic fields transduced from localized infrasound by piezoelectric crystals and magnetic particulate metals within the Padang Pyramid synthetic andesite stones. Selective use of magnetic metals in the production of synthetic firestones was also replicated in the pyramids of La Mana, Ecuador. So I hope you enjoyed that look at Gunang Padang, and this is Human Resonance, their YouTube channel. They have uh, quite a few interesting topics, so sub their channel if you choose to. But that is a look at Gunang Padang, and I found that video from Human Resonance very interesting. Maybe these people who built this pyramid sometime a long, long time ago knew of grid lines and uh, energy, the earth provided in grid lines or ley lines and uh, they tapped into the earth's energy something that this greedy dirty fuel burning culture just cannot uh, conceive or want wants to conceive but that is a look at kunang padang hope you thought this was interesting and you all have a nice day